the glory and tragedy of the Dodge Brothers story. The two things we need most to feel in control of our life and that things are happening for a, similar to COVID-19 today, the effects of the Spanish flu pandemic, which started its inexorable march across the globe in 1918, were profound. Both John and Horace Dodge became ill while attending the National Automobile Show in New York City in January 1920. Although there is still some disagreement regarding their condition, it was widely believed at the time that they had contracted the last wave of the horrific Spanish flu epidemic, which claimed more than 50 million lives worldwide. John, 55, succumbed to pneumonia just days after being unwell on January 14th, like many COVID-19 victims, and passed away in his hotel room. Despite having cirrhosis of the liver, which was the official cause of death, Horace overcame influenza and pneumonia, but spent the most of a year in Florida nearly bedridden until passing away on December 10th at the age of 52. The passing of the Dodge brothers signaled the end of an era and shocked the U.S. automotive industry. Additionally, it put a halt to initiatives to transform the sector from manufacturing to sales and marketing. The brothers personified the American dream of achieving great wealth after starting out in poverty. They were hard drinking, rough and tumble blue collar workers from Niles, Michigan. Horace Elgin was born in 1868, whereas John Francis was born in 1864. Their father, grandfathers, and uncles all worked as mechanics. Both had a tendency toward mechanics. Horace gained a reputation for having a hair trigger temper, whereas John was a little more reserved. The redheaded Dodge lads worked as an unbreakable unit. Despite amassing enormous money, the brothers were never able to shed their harsh blue-collar habits. The Detroit Times gained a reputation as a brawler in 1910 after publishing a report on a bloody bar fight. In response, John Dodge first publicly apologized to the bar owner before paying for any damages. He afterwards made a threat to the proprietor of the newspaper. One time after making fun of him for being unable to crank his Ford, Horace beat a man out cold in the street. The brothers were well known for speedboat racing and excessive drinking while donning identically made suits throughout the Detroit area, as well as in Chicago and New York City. Despite being among the richest men in America, they were not allowed into Detroit's elite society. Horace erected a massive residence on the neighboring land with a 12-car garage and a testing facility that fronted the Gross Point Country Club after the country club refused to let him join. Additionally, they oversaw the construction of Symphony Hall and provided funding for the Detroit Symphony. Almost immediately after John relocated to Detroit in 1886, the brothers started to leave their mark on the city. Horace followed him the following spring. The brothers were intelligent, driven, and diligent. And soon, John was making $16.50 a week as a foreman, and Horace was making $13.50 as a machinist in a boiler manufacturing company. They started working for a maker of machinery in Windsor on the Canadian side of the Detroit River in 1892. They also created the Evans & Dodge Bicycle, a bicycle with ball bearings, in an effort to capitalize on the upsurge in interest in two-wheeled vehicles. They opened their own machine shop in Detroit in 1900. They published an ad in the local phone book that expressed their self-assurance and aspirations. We are proud to do any class of work that can be done in a first-class modern shop. Within a year, they had obtained a contract from Ransom E. Olds to supply engines for his fledgling Olds Motor Works after quickly developing a reputation for doing high-quality work. Six months later, the brothers started providing transmissions for the business. The second big contract was signed in February 1903. This time, Henry Ford was the client, and he hired them to produce the running year for his upcoming Model A. The Dodge brothers had reservations going into the arrangement because this was Ford's third effort to start a car firm and because he was known for being hounded by creditors. These reservations proved to be well-founded a few months later. Ford owed the brothers more than $7,000 when, in June 1903, they struck a deal that would alter both their lives and the future of the motor industry. In exchange for 10% of Ford Motor Company stock, they consented to wipe off past due payments and grant Ford an additional $3,000 in credit, with the remaining balance due in six months. The Dodge brothers nearly entirely worked for Ford for 10 years, and John Dodge accepted a position as vice president of the business. Their production facilities had reached capacity by 1910, so they established a sizable, cutting-edge factory complex in Hamtramck, a neighborhood around Detroit. The Dodge brothers were the top American provider of automotive parts and components by 1913, when they had 2,500 full-time workers. The brothers' growth had been spectacular, 
and by the time they relocated to Detroit, they were richer than anyone could have anticipated. Nevertheless, John Dodge once remarked, I'm tired of being carried around in Henry Ford's vest pocket. Thus, the brothers started an ambitious 18-month plan that involved suspending their contract with Ford, expanding the plant further, creating an automobile, and acquiring the manufacturing-related machine tools. On July 1, 1914, Dodge Brothers Motor Car Company was founded. It was one of a total of 120 new automakers that year. The Saturday Evening Post published the first news in August. Simple interest-sparking advertising and promotion then came after that, the Dodge Brothers. Then came the addition of Dodge Brothers Reliable, Dependable Sound. There were no examples or specifics. Press release distribution and carefully chosen interviews came next. The Dodge Brothers are two of Michigan's top mechanics. There is no doubt that the Dodge Brothers vehicle will be the best value available when it is released, according to a report from the Michigan manufacturer and financial record from August. More than 6,000 individuals visited the new Dodge debut exhibit in only one day when the first Dodge dealership in Detroit opened its doors in November. The five-passenger open touring automobile became popular right away. It cost $785 and included a four-cylinder engine with 35 horsepower. A brand new Ford Model T went for about $490, but it barely had 20 horsepower. And unlike the Ford, the Dodge came with a 12-volt electrical system, a speedometer, and electric starter and lights as standard equipment. The cars were also the first to have a body made entirely of steel. All of the components for the new automobiles were produced by the Dodge Brothers, excluding the bodywork, tires, glass, lights, and batteries. The Dodge Brothers had entered a market that was incredibly cutthroat. According to a market analysis, vehicles priced between $676 and $775 made up 15.5% of the market in 1915 and 19.8% in 1916. In that limited price range, 15 manufacturers were in competition. The Dodge Brothers didn't back down. They sold to close to 50 nations and focused on a wide range of commercial clients, including airlines, telecommunications firms, shipping lines, and taxicab franchises. The company started started off with 5,000 employees, but quickly expanded to more than 7,000. 17,000 men and women were employed by Dodge Brothers in Hamtramck by the middle of the year 1909. They were the only manufacturer, aside from Ford, to employ African Americans. The first specialized test track was constructed on the industrial premises, among other advances. Dodge Brothers, like Ford, did not release new models every year. The emphasis was on making mechanical advancements instead. A greater variety of types and commercial vehicles were also added. It turned out to be a winning formula. From just over U.S. $11 million in sales for the year ending in June 30, 1915, to U.S. $161 million in 1920, sales skyrocketed. Between 1914 and 1920, output increased from 370 automobiles to more than 145,000. John and Horace Dodge had created an empire in under 20 years. Then, in 1919, Henry Ford purchased their interest of the Ford Motor Company for $25 million in cash, greatly increasing their riches. The brothers' initial $10,000 investment in 1903 saw a staggering $32 million return thanks to this and the income they cashed over the years. What might have been is a question that cannot be avoided. After John and Horace Dodge passed away, their widows took over ownership of the business. However, without the brothers, management failed, and in 1925, financial advisors advised the Dodge brothers' widows to sell their stock in the company. Dodge was purchased by Walter P. Chrysler for $170 million in cash and stock options three years later. That's it for today's video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon for future updates.